Well, for more now, we can cross now live to Brussels to, to our correspondent there, Dave Keating. Dave, you heard there the reaction in Paris. What's the reaction been where you are in Brussels? Well, we did ask the European Commission for a comment on this, and they reminded us that the Commission never reacts to national elections in the EU until coalition governments are actually formed. So they can't congratulate anyone on a good election result. But I think here in Brussels this morning, people are digesting the reality from yesterday's election, which is that we now know there will not be a fully left government in Germany. That was an open question uh, because it was a remote possibility that the SPD and the Greens together could have had enough votes to form a government between them, uh, but it was a more likely possibility that they could ally with Die Linke, the leftist, the far-left party in Germany. But Die Linke did terribly yesterday, and the numbers just aren't there for that so-called red-red-green coalition. So we now know that there will be a conservative party in the German government somewhere, whether it's the FDP, which is a liberal party, but really on the very conservative end of the Europe. European liberals looking at the continent as a whole, or the CDU and CSU. Uh, so what we now know is that there won't be a major sea change in German voting patterns here in Brussels, particularly in the European Council. And that's important because Germany has the largest number of votes in the Council. The Council is the upper legislature of the EU, and uh, uh, voting is based on population. So obviously Germany is really the prize there. So what people are waiting to see is whether or not it's the FDP, whether or not it's the CDU, and what does that mean for EU policy? There's a lot of really important votes coming up, a lot of really important things to decide, and one of the most important is what to do with the remaining austerity policies that are still in place from the financial crisis 10 years ago. At that time, uh, the Conservatives of Europe, the European People's Party, dominated almost all countries in the EU, and they put in a very conservative, austerity-driven policy. The reality of the political situation in Europe has changed dramatically over the past five years. The EPP is really on its way out. The question is, can they hold on to Germany? And if they did hold on to Germany, would they stop the reform of these austerity parties, which people have been talking about? The assumption here has been that in the recovery from the coronavirus pandemic, they would ditch these austerity policies that were put in place 10 years ago. Now it's not so certain. I mean, for sure, the FDP, austerity is their bread and butter. And Christian Littner, the head of the FDP, wants to be finance minister. He will not give Germany's vote for relaxing these austerity policies. So I think that's one of the biggest questions people are asking here this morning. And Dave, this coalition building in Germany could take months. Um, what if there is no government in Germany, I mean, say, before, until Christmas? I imagine that's something diplomats where you are are rather worried about. Yeah, I mean, this is the nightmare scenario. I think you know, whatever we end up with with the German government will be a centrist government, pro-EU, as Clément Bon was just saying there in that sound clip. The biggest fear is that there won't be a German government, that it could take many months, who knows, maybe even a year to find a German government. And we know from past experience that while the new government is being chosen, it's very difficult to get votes passed in the council because they're waiting to see what Germany's massive number of votes are going to be. And they need to wait for the new governing coalition. So if that means means everything here in Brussels has to be put on hold for the next months. It'll have big implications for climate policy, environment policy, and it'll have big implications for the upcoming French presidency of the EU, which starts on January 1st. They need a German partner to make these big changes in integration with defense, with economy, and without a German government, that is a nightmare scenario for Paris, which wants to make big changes to the EU next year. Dave Keating, for us there in Brussels, thank you very much indeed.